What is Zen Buddhism? Zen Buddhism, or simply Zen, is a mixture of Indian Mahayana Buddhism and Taoism. It began in China, then spread to Korea and Japan. The word Zen is the Japanese pronunciation of the Chinese Chan, which means meditation. Chan came to Japan and became Zen around the 8th century. Today, the word Zen is in more general use in the West. By the mid-20th century, Zen Buddhism became very popular in the West. The essence of Zen is the attempt to understand the meaning of life directly, without being misled by logical thought or language. It is important to note that Zen techniques are compatible with other faiths and are often used, for example, by Christians seeking a mystical understanding of their faith. It is equally important to note that Zen often seems paradoxical, as it requires an intense discipline which, when practiced properly, results in total spontaneity and ultimate freedom. Zen Buddhism is a stripped-down, determined, uncompromising, cut-to-the-chase, meditation-based Buddhism that takes no interest in doctrinal refinements. Not relying on scriptures, doctrines, or rituals, Zen is verified by personal experience and is passed on from master to disciple, hand-to-hand, -hand, ineffably, through hard, intimate training. Though Zen recognizes, at least loosely, the validity of normative Buddhist scriptures, it has created its own texts over the generations. Liberally flavored with doses of Taoism, Confucianism, and Chinese poetry, and written in informal language studded with Chinese folk sayings and street slang, much of classical Zen literature is built on legendary anecdotes of the great masters. But it is interesting to note that the Buddha is rarely mentioned. There are four major Zen dictums, which were ascribed to Bodhidharma, Zen's legendary founder, which are always quoted to illustrate the essential Zen spirit, namely, a special transmission outside the scriptures, no dependency on words and letters, pointing directly to the human mind, seeing into one's nature and attaining Buddhahood. This shoot from the hip Zen spirit appeals to the Western mind, especially the American mind, which is as iconoclastic and anti-authoritarian as it is religious. It has also appealed, over many generations, to millions of Buddhist practitioners in the Far East, who, conditioned by the Taoism and Confucianism that had been imported everywhere from China, could relate to the Zen message and style. Methods of Zen Practice Although Zen Buddhism eventually developed traditions of study and ritual, its emphasis on personal experience has always made it a practice-oriented tradition. The practice is meditation. Sitting Zen, or Zazen in Japanese, has always been central in Zen training centers, where monks rise early each morning for meditation practice and do long retreats consisting of many, many silent unmoving hours on the cushion. Zazen, which literally means sitting Zen, or sitting meditation, is an intensely simple practice. It is generally taught without steps, stages, or frills. Just sit, the master admonishes, by which he or she means, sit upright in good posture, paying careful attention to breathing in your belly until you are fully alert and present. This sense of being present, with illumination and intensity, is the essence of Zazen, and although there are many approaches to Zen meditation, they all come back to this. Of the many ways to practice Zen Buddhism, perhaps the most iconic is Zazen, which literally means sitting Zen, but is often referred to as Zen meditation. In Zazen, practitioners sit on a cushion in a formalized posture, with a straight back, eyes half open, and legs crossed onto the opposite thigh in what is called the full lotus position. Please note that for those who cannot sit in full lotus, Zen Buddhists endorse several alternatives, including meditating seated in a chair. Zazen is often taught as a goalless practice in which there is nothing to achieve. Just sitting, 
is in itself an expression of an already awakened mind. Dogen, the 13th century founder of the Soto school of Japanese Zen, believed that a person practicing Zazen is, in that moment, the Buddha himself, because the very act of sitting manifests the enlightenment mind that is who we really are. Others believe that Zen has a distinct goal, that is, awakening, and that direct effort is the only way to attain it. In the Rinzai school of Japanese Zen, practice may focus on answering koans. Koans are enigmatic or paradoxical questions or statements about reality that cannot be understood with the conceptual mind. Zen students may engage with these conundrums as part of a set curriculum that includes such well-known koans as What is the sound of one hand clapping? Guided by a teacher, the practitioner moves through stages of realization. A koan is ultimately about the practitioner. The biggest koan is how to live a fully awakened life. For many people from East Asian cultures, Zen plays an especially important role in helping families express their continued love and respect for their ancestors, that is, departed relatives, who are in the afterlife awaiting rebirth. In fact, many homes in Japan have small altars called Butsudan with photographs of deceased relatives, memorial tablets, and offerings of flowers, candles, and food. Each August, people from across Japan head home for Oban, the festival of the dead, when deceased relatives are said to return from the afterlife for the day. Oban is not a morbid occasion, but a time of community and celebration because everyone, Buddha's teaching holds, will achieve enlightenment someday. It is interesting to note that in the Zen monastery, life is entirely organized around sitting in the meditation hall. But Zazen is also understood to be something more than this sitting. It is conceived of as a state of mind, or being that extends into all activities. In fact, we hear practitioners say, work is Zazen, eating is Zazen, sleeping, walking, standing, going to the toilet. All are Zazen practice. In Soto Zen, the Japanese school practiced extensively in the West, there is an especially strong emphasis on this moving Zen. Soto monastic life tends to be highly ritualized, so as to promote concentration in all things. There is, for instance, a special elegant and mindful practice, called Oriyoki, for eating ritualized meals in the meditation hall. As we can see, Zen is something that a person does. It's not a concept that can be described in words. As already mentioned, Zen does not depend on words for it has to be experienced in order to understand. And in addition to what was mentioned above, the essence of Zen Buddhism is that all human beings are Buddha, and that all they have to do is to discover that truth for themselves. Hence, Zen sends us looking inside us for enlightenment. There's no need to search outside ourselves for the answers. This is because we can find the answers in the same place that we found the questions. And it must be note that human beings can't learn this truth by philosophizing or rational thought, nor by studying scriptures, taking part in worship rites and rituals, or many of the other things that people think religious people do. What one needs to do in Zen Buddhism is to control the mind through meditation and other techniques that involve mind and body, and to give up logical thinking and avoid getting trapped in a spider's web of words.